In this Grasshopper tutorial, uh, as we talked about this in the brainstorming section, we're going to model these parametric curves, the rotating curves in Grasshopper. And as you can see, we can uh, change the rotation, the location of the rotation. We can change the uh, degree of rotation. And we can also change the thickness we can change the number of the sections and you can see that I can increase this. So basically this is really was going to be a, an easy way to uh, model this in Grasshopper. Uh, one of the most important thing in this tutorial is that, uh, let me just put the bifocals plug in here, uh, is that many of those who talked about the steps started with uh, making this curve, the base curve, a parametric uh, algorithm. So I guess that you have to uh, think about this. You don't have to model everything in Grasshopper. This is something common uh, between those who work with Grasshopper. But if you want to uh, go further and uh, learn Grasshopper easier, uh, always start in Rhino, model your uh, parametric model in Rhino. And when you just understood the uh, concept behind the model, then you can just translate it into Grasshopper. So what I'm going to do is to uh, talk about this picture and say that uh, how can we model this in Grasshopper? The, when you just see a first uh, image, when you see an image and you want to model this in Grasshopper, the best thing you can do to help you model this is to, uh, first of all, uh, start modeling this in Grasshopper, so uh, in Rhino, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is to look at this, and as you can see, there is a base curve. So let me just draw here, okay? We can see it here. It's clear here. You can see that the base curve is scaling up. So we are making it bigger and bigger, and we, also, we are also rotating this. So uh, you can see that this is the baseline here. And if I just put lines, we have it here. And let's just draw this. And we can see that this these lines uh, are rotating around a point. So you can easily see that the base curve is rotating around the point and the z-axis. So what I'm going to do is to draw the base curve at the top and then move them uh, in the z di uh, minus z direction and then scale them to reach the model. So we can start with a curve and go here and use a spiral here. So I'm going to start with a spiral and we can start with a flat spiral, let's say zero. And uh, the first radius doesn't really matter. And here is important that you put it in mode, maybe turns. And I'm going to define the turns into maybe two turns. And let's just make it a little bit bigger, OK? So what we want to do is to uh, have something like this. And if you just look at this picture, assume that this is a spiral. Okay, I'm going to draw this with the mouse, so it's going to be hard. And then at this point, uh, we are just moving at the t uh, at this corner to the end. So we have to uh, use a line here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So let's use the subcurve tool to take a, t uh, a part of this curve. Okay, subcurve, and I'm going to start from here and maybe go to here. So it's going to be a little bit more than a, a single turn. And what we are going to do is to draw a line and use the control key and go down here on the O snap and use tangent from, here we go, and use this curve to draw a tangent line. Uh, whatever you want and you can see that it draws the line okay so if you want to draw a tangent line you have to first put a point on the curve so we maybe say that we want to start uh, the near is going to be here as you can see uh, we have this near and you have to put your o snap on to put the near on okay so i'm going to put this point 
uh, on this curve maybe we want to uh, draw the tangent from here so we just put a point there and then we go to the line again the control key on those snap and tangent from this point okay and we're going to click on that and we are going to use the intersection so be sure that you have the intersection and we have this intersection and connect the line from here to here okay and then we can simply uh, choose every uh, all the curves and go to trim and maybe trim this part and then we can just simply join them here we go we can delete this point and here is the base a curve we want to work maybe we want to just put this here at the zero and rotate this a little bit so I'm going to use the rotate 2d and rotate this line with the shift key on the X direction doesn't really matter where it is so here we go this is the base one you can produce this curve in grasshopper but I don't think this is not really uh, the case because we can play with this base curve and produce uh, whatever we want and we're going to waste our time to produce this in uh, parametric curve but if you want to draw in a sp uh, spiral uh, I'm going to explain this in maybe another tutorial you can always use the uh, point cylindrical or point uh, polar to draw the curve uh, in a spiral flat spiral or a 3d spiral okay so let's just set this to the base curve and here we go and what we want to do is to first scale this and find the center of this. So I'm going to scale this and give this the geometry. The center, I'm going to extract this and give this a point. Be sure to go to display and put the gumballs on so you can move this point. And then I'm going to give a factor to this. Okay, so one of the factors we can use is the range because a range can give you a range of numbers and the domain is uh, the important thing so we can go to this math and use this construct domain and give this to domain so we can control the start and the end so the start is going to be zero uh, okay okay no the start is going to be one because we want this to be scaled uh, it by itself so it's going to be one and then it's going to maybe scale down to something like uh, 0 0.2 maybe it doesn't really matter but we're going to increase or decrease that number and the steps are the numbers we want in between these scale factors so I'm going to give this to the scale factor and you can see that it's going to scale from 1 to 0 0.2 and we can also make this smaller or bigger and we can also change the center and you can see that we can change that okay uh, the next step is to uh, move them down in the Z direction. So I'm going to give this a move simply in the Z direction. And uh, let's just turn this off. And we talked about this, that we want to move them down. So I'm going to give a series here. So you can understand the range is to define the range of scale. And the series will help us to define a series of moving uh, curve. So this, uh, let's just put this minus x for the z to go down. And we're going to start with 0. So the first one is going to be on the ground. Then is the step, which we can just define this to, uh, uh, to define the distance between those curves. And then the count. Uh, as you can see here, we have, uh, let me just show you here. We have 13 curves. And that is because when you divide a range uh, to a number, it goes one up. So it's going to be 13, okay? Uh, and this, the series uh, has to be, if you connect this to the count, we have to give this an x plus 1. So it's going to be 13 because the series is going to give you exactly the number of counts, but the range is going to give you more, one more than the steps, okay? So here we go and give this an x plus one so now we can control the move movement of this in the minus z direction remember with the minus x and this is going to be basically the thickness of those sections okay so the last part is going to rotate them so we're going to go to rotate and I'm going to use rotate 3d because this is going to be complete rotation let's just rotate this the center of rotation is 
you can uh, use this center of scale as the center of rotation but if you want to produce really crazy things you can also give another center for rotation so you have two points one for scaling and one for rotation but for now I'm going to use the center of scale for the center of rotation and turn this off and the axis is the Z direction because we want to rotate them in the Z direction so this is basically the Z and the angle you can uh, you better know that the angle in grasshopper is degrees okay I'm going to put this to degrees because if you don't put that to degrees it's going to be in radians and we usually are uh, easier with degrees and here we go so we have to define another series or range uh, for the degrees of rotation so let's just again for a good exercise on range we're going to give another range here another construct domain to define the minimum and the maximum rotation from 0 to maybe 180 and again the steps are going to be the number of these steps so we give this a 12 and we give this to the angle okay so you can see that I can rotate this from 0 to 276 uh, to the end and here it goes so <clears throat> now we can give this a simple curve a thickness and we are just finished uh, remember that we can change the number of those curves you can see that we can increase that we can decrease the distance between them and that is the thickness of those sections and we can also change the point uh, of this you can see that it's going to change our model and the most important thing is that you can watch this from top and uh, change the point to uh, reach the best uh, result you want you can see that I can also see the results and change that point uh, to reach desired results okay and now let's just go give the thickness to that and that's going to be finished okay so we have these set of curves and now we have to offset them inside or outside doesn't really matter so I'm going to give this an offset curve and let's just define the offset distance here and you can see that those curves are going to ins uh, go offset inside you can also go an expression minus x to put them outside and here we go and now we have to connect them uh, into a surface one of the things you can do is to uh, you can see here let's just connect a curve to that and the reason I'm connecting those curves is to for those who are uh, starting grasshopper you have to see that if that the output is in groups or not so you can see that this is in groups and uh, let's just simplify this so you can see those groups there are 24 groups in one and we talked about this in different tutorials that if you want to connect two by two you have to also graft this uh, simplify this we have also a complete lesson on grafting in the grasshopper course so if you want you can also subscribe to the grasshopper course and learn about grafting more but for now when we have two set of groups and you can see that now it's going to be also in groups and those wires will show you when I put them into one curve we will have a groups of two let's just talk about this and here we can just loft them together two by two so I can also put a loft here and you can see the results uh, or you can also go to the surface and use uh, the boundary surfaces to make them into boundaries doesn't really matter the most important thing about the uh, boundary or loft is to choose the one which uh, is faster so let's check this out when I change the rotation maybe where was the rotation here we go let's just change the rotation uh, you can see that there is two numbers down there if you don't see them go to display canvas widget and put the profiler here and you can see that this is a little bit slower than loft so maybe we pick loft here because it's faster and if you also use Rhino 6 and Grasshopper uh, 6 Grasshopper it's basically Grasshopper 2 but okay uh, the new Grasshopper and Rhino 6 
it's a little bit faster okay so i guess that loft is a better uh, for this solution than boundary and then we need to extrude them so here we go extrude them in the z direction and we have to give the exactly distance between those curves at, as the thickness and we are done okay and you can see that those are going to sit on each other so we can also go to display and connect a custom preview to that so we can see this maybe use another color swatch to draw this a color and we can also go to the surface and use this uh, naked brep edge to get the edges and turn this off so you can also see those edges and we can also give a color to the edge I sometimes just uh, use a black color so you can see that okay you can also see the naked the interior and non-manifold but mainly it's interior so here we go and you can also see this see the results uh, we can change the location of the rotation and scale and to have better results we can watch this from top uh, we can change the location of the center of rotation we can just decrease the rotation to something smaller maybe okay 180 maybe something like that and so this is going to be uh, 180 rotation and we can also decrease the offset so they're going to be smaller and here you go you can see that those are the sections we can just make this fitting and we can also play with the point of rotation to maybe have better results you can see that if I move this we have a distance here and if I move here uh, you can see that I'm just decreasing the distance between those sections but perhaps this is better to have uh, uh, they sit on each other so let's just increase the distance of offset so they just sit on each other and we can just make this in 3d and we can decrease the number of them to maybe 12 or maybe 18 and here we go you can see that this is the results and this is really similar to the one you just saw here and it's going to be something maybe less than 180 degrees but we can just decrease the number here maybe to 18 0.8 okay here we go and you can bake this extrusion to see the results in rhino and we have this in shaded mode here we go we can also put this in a rendered one and you can see the results and again in an artistic mode so you can see this in artistic mode so this was the tutorial of this rotating curves and you can see that uh, you can simply make this by a rotation and scale and moving them down uh, but there are sure many ways you can do this but this is the uh, way I just picked and remember that uh, producing a parametric algorithm it's, uh, it's not a limit you have uh, infinite ways to model something so it's really based on your creativity but I'm trying to teach you some of the tricks and techniques you can use to produce the results and oh, uh, you can also combine techniques different techniques to uh, produce this results okay thank you for watching uh, be sure to comment uh, your uh, opinion about this tutorial uh, how do you think this tutorial was was it easy was it uh, uh, was it a good way to explain this example or it was a little bit hard so I can improve my uh, tutorials and thank you for watching and also hit the like button so you can uh, check out more about our videos and also subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching